speaker is uh, Professor Wu's Wuxin. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. So next speaker is Professor uh, Fahot Ashmatov. OK, yeah, so, that's that's me. Yeah. Mm. Can, can yeah, you hear yeah. me? Hi. Yeah, I, I can hear you. So could, could you share okay. your screen? Yeah, so let me see. Can you see okay, it? So, yeah, I can see it. We can okay, see it cool. clearly. OK, so the, the, the title of the talk is Nightclick Liegeable and Derived Person Structures. Let's work on. OK. Can I, can I start? Yeah, please. Please start. OK, good. Uh, OK, so thank you very much for, for this nice opportunity to give a talk in such a wonderful seminar. Um, uh, the title of my talk is Nichols Lee Algebra uh, and Derived Poisson Structure. So uh, this, is, this is a work which, is, uh, which was done a while ago, actually several years ago. And um, uh, the reason I'm giving this talk now is because there are some new, uh, uh, new, uh, new uh, observations we obtained recently and for this reason, I decided to sort of refresh uh, this this thing, and uh, yeah, and probably uh, you know some of you may not know about this stuff, and I decided to share with you this this yeah. So okay, let me okay, let me start with the with the beginning. So Nicholas Lie algebra. So what are the Nicholas Lie algebras? Let me start with a very simple uh, case of Nicholas Lie algebras. So let A be a free algebra on two generators x and y and uh, let omega be a uh, symplectic form on this two-dimensional vector space spanned by x and y. Uh, and symplectic form is given by uh, omega x, y equal to one. So naturally, because it's a symplectic form, uh, omega of y, x will be minus one and omega x, x equal to zero and omega y, y will be equal to uh, zero. Uh, questions? No? Okay. Excuse me, we couldn't see the next page. Uh, you couldn't see the next page. Okay, so so what do you see actually now? Only first page. Only first page. So okay, let me. Okay, so what should I do? Let me. I, oh, maybe. Well, I don't understand. Oh. So you still see the first page, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, oh. I don't it's okay now. No, it's okay. It's the second one. Uh, it's the second page, no? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, okay. So I made a full screen, and after I made the full screen, uh, it became... Um, okay. So can you see it now? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. We can see okay. our second page now. Okay, good. So let me actually uh, yeah, stop the video, because my internet is not quite stable. So that's why... Uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, so let yeah once again let x let a be a free algebra on two generators x and y. Uh, omega is a <clears throat> symplectic form on this two-dimensional space with omega x y equal to one. Uh, then uh, we can uh, define a C bilinear map from a uh, cross a to a by the following formula. So you take a word right u one u two up to u n, and second word v one v two up to v m. And the bilinear form is defined as follows, right? So you, oh, I think I missed here. So here it's uh, okay. So uh, you, you, yeah. So you go over, uh, you run over all i from one to n, g from one to m. Then uh, when you look at the uh, omega of u i and v j, right? So you just remove them in the list, right? So uh, then it will be u i plus one. So it should be plus one here. So it says i plus. It should be i plus one from uh, i plus one to uh, uh, u, i plus one uh, uh, to un. And then you start from the beginning, u1 up to ui minus one, vj plus one, v up to vm. So it's increasing. And then you have from uh, v1 to vj minus one. Okay. So all those uh, uh, words, uh, u, uh, ui up to un and v1 up to vm, 
all words are, uh, are words which uh, consist of X and Y, right? Okay, so next uh, we consider um, what's called commutative subspace, right? So this is the uh, linear span of all elements of the form A times B minus B times A. And then uh, we consider the uh, commutator quotient subspace, right? Basically, it's a, it's a quotient of uh, A by this uh, commutator subspace. Okay, so the claim uh, basically is that uh, this this uh, this bilinear form is well defined. And it's actually also defined on this uh, on this space L A. So more precisely, okay. Can you see the next page? Yes, we can see it. We can see it. Okay. Yeah, no great, problem. Great. Okay, great. So uh, there is a proposition uh, due to Konsevich, uh, which is dated in 1992. This is uh, basically in this seminar of Gilpant. Uh, about this non commutative symplectic uh, uh, structures, where he actually proves that uh, this, this uh, bilinear form on this space LA induces a well defined Lie algebra structure. Yeah, this is a result of 92. And before I move to the uh, uh, generalization of this construction, I want to point out a couple of uh, remarks. So, first remark uh, is that uh, the bilinear form on A itself is a Leibniz algebra. Uh, and uh, this is actually a nice example of infinite dimensional uh, Leibniz algebra structure. Uh, of course, uh, back then, uh, Kansevich didn't say it's a Leibniz algebra. He just, you know, what he did, he uh, just defined the uh, structure on A itself first. And then uh, he, what he observed, he observed that when he took the quotient of A by the commutator, by the commutator subspace, it turns out to be a, a Lie algebra structure, okay? So we know all that uh, the structure of the Leibniz algebra, of course, was introduced uh, later, I, I believe 90, uh, 93 or 90, 93 or 94, right, by, by Lude. Okay, so this is the first remark. And the second remark is that um, uh, the, the construction which Kansevich gave, actually, it's, it's quite similar to geometric construction which was given earlier by Goldman. So precisely in 1980, uh, he gave the following construction. So he considered the Riemann surface, with genus bigger than one. And what he showed is that, that linear space spent by three homotopy classes of loops on this Riemann surface, modular constant loops. So basically think about the uh, three homotopy classes of loops as a, uh, this algebra A, right? And the modular constant loops, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, this commutator thing, right? So the commutator of the A with A. Uh, it forms a Lie algebra structure. And um, moreover, moreover, there is a natural map from this Lie algebra to the Lie algebra on the modulized space of isomorphism classes of flat connection on this Riemann surface, okay? And the reason I'm giving this remark is because the construction is very similar. So if you look at the construction of Goldman, the way he he he, he gives this, this bracket is very similar to what, to what Kansevich did actually, okay? And therefore, uh, from now on, actually, uh, many people refer to this, to this bracket as uh, uh, goldman Kansevich bracket. And in fact, maybe I should make one more remark is that uh, there is another construction due to uh, Chas and Sullivan, 97, where, uh, where they use this, this, this type of bracket uh, to construct a Lie algebra structure on the what's so-called uh, open string topology, okay? So, okay, next I want to discuss a quiver, quiver generalization of this construction. So the, the construction I just gave you, the Kansevich uh, uh, construction, it's a very special construction of the, uh, of the quiver construction. So let Q be a finite quiver, meaning that it's a finite directed graph, finite directed or finite oriented graph. And let uh, Q bar be the double quiver. Yeah, so this means that it's a quiver obtained from the original quiver by adding uh, to every arrow in Q an arrow in the opposite direction, right? So basically, you don't do anything to the uh, to the set of um, vertices, right? So the only thing you do is you just double the number of uh, arrows. So let me give you an example. So first example, let's consider the example uh, with um, three vertices and two uh, uh, two arrows, a one, a two, and double queer will be a one and then a one star, a two and a two star, as you can see in this picture. Okay, so the example of Kansevich uh, corresponds to the example two. So if we consider the uh, uh, quiver with one uh, uh, one vertex and one loop, yeah. So 
you double it, right? You double it. You can see that they will have two arrows now, A and A star. So basically, the variables X and Y in the Kantsevich case, right? They correspond to A and A star. Okay, I'll, I'll explain more, in more details uh, in, in a moment. Okay. So <clears throat> next, uh, so let uh, CQ be the pass algebra of the queer, right? So this is a kind of standard thing in the queer uh, business. So this means it's an associative algebra uh, where the product is given by concatenation of passes, right? So more precisely, if you have two passes, right? P and Q, uh, you can put them together, right? P and Q, they can put, put together. If the starting point of the pass P is the same as a uh, ending point of terminating point of Q. And if this is not the case, then you can just simply take the product to be zero. Okay, so this is quite natural, um, quite natural uh, construction, right? Quite natural construction. So uh, this is an associative algebra, and in this associative algebra, there is a very nice uh, semi-simple uh, subalgebra which is uh, spanned by the idempotence, and uh, the idempotence appears as a, just uh, as a, as a vertex of Q. So to each vertex of Q, there is a um, there is an idempotent element of the pass algebra corresponding to the pass algebra in the, in the pass algebra. And it's actually, yeah, it's an orthogonal set of idempotents, right? So, so if you take, for example, uh, the vertex I and vertex J, distinct one, right? So there is this EI, EJ, right? For each of these uh, vertices, the idempotent elements, and the product will be equal to zero if I is not equal to J. If it's equal, then it will be equal to itself, yeah? Is it, is it clear so far, so far so good? Okay. So yeah, now what we do uh, is we want to, to, yeah, I want to give you a construction. As I said, I, I want to give a clear generalization of this construction. So basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look at the pass algebra of this double clear, and I'm, I'm gonna quotient this by the commutator of this pass algebra, yeah? And um, this space, right? This now new space and Q is spent by necklaces, right? So what I mean by necklaces, it's just oriented cycles in the double quiver. Uh, consider up to secret permutation, right? Means that you identify two uh, two necklaces, right? If uh, if one obtained from another one by uh, by secret permutation. Okay, let me give you an example. So uh, in this example, example one, right, which I I gave earlier. Uh, yeah, so we have uh, three vertices, right? One, two, and three, and Corresponding to those vertices, we have uh, idempotent elements, right? E1, E2, E3, uh, A1, A1 star, A2, A2 star, right? So the semi-simple uh, semi -simple algebra will be a direct sum of idempotent elements, C1 plus C2 plus C3. And the pass algebra will be a pass, uh, will be a, a algebra over this, uh, over this uh, semi-simple algebra. Right? So basically it's, uh, you know, this V and uh, free algebra on the generators A1, A2, a1 star, A2 star, and subject to the following relations. So basically it's, you know, A1, A2 equal to zero it, it is, is because, you know, when you concatenate, right, those two things, they are they equal to zero, right? So you cannot put them together. Uh, same for all other things, right? A1, E1 e is because the, well, the starting point of E1, right? Uh, sorry, starting point of A1 is E1, right? So that's why, yeah. So that's why you can compose and, from, from the uh, right by E1, from the left by E2, and you obtain a, A1 itself. And etc. right? So all those, all those relations. I hope I didn't miss any, any, any relations. Yeah, so, so yeah, probably you should add one more, one more thing that uh, uh, the orthogonal item potent means that EI EJ equal to zero, right? And EI square equal to EI, right? Because they are the important elements. Okay, let's, let's move on. So yeah, let me let me just list some of the uh, oriented cycles, or more precisely, some necklaces, right? So necklaces in this case will look like this, right? So a one a one star, right? Then a one a star square, right? So basically, what what is it? It's like this, right? So a one a one star, and then you just you know move several times, right? Two times, three times, so you get one necklace. Or you may do like this. By the way, do you, do you see what this 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 this, uh, this mouse here moving? Yes, yes. Yeah, so A1, A2, then A2 star, A1 star, and you can do this many times, right? You can do this, yeah, you can do, you can go around many, many times, right? And all of those things will give you uh, oriented cycles or necklaces. 
uh, on this on this space. Uh, sorry, yeah. uh, in, in the case, could you move in to back one page? Yeah. yeah. Okay, here uh, when you define V as uh, just um, uh, as dependence, am I right? In V. Yeah, it's a, a direct sum. Is, yeah, direct what direct sum. Is the uh, what will be the multiplication of uh, a one in the V? Uh, no, 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 no. What What do you mean a one in the V? I mean. I, I didn't know. So, so, so this is the, so V is V is a, a semi simple algebra. Right? So here E1, E1 is E1, right? Itself. E2 I is E1. Direct, uh, direct sum of independence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Ah, okay, I see. Thank yeah. you. But uh, yeah, and yeah, and the, the, the relation between uh, AIs and EIs is, is given exactly as, as, I, as I wrote below, right? So A1, E1 equal to E2, E1, right? Because you know the, the starting point of uh, E one is a terminating point of E one, which is right. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Okay. So this is the example of uh, necklaces, and as I said, the necklaces define up to permutation, meaning that E one E one star is the same as E one star E one, right? And etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can permute them, right? By cyclic permutation, and they all will be equal in the in the in the space, right? In the space and Q, they will be all, all equal. Uh, okay, now uh, now I'm ready to uh, to define you uh, um, Lie algebra structure, right? So if we take two uh, two uh, necklaces, right, omega one, omega two, two oriented cycles of necklaces, then we define the uh, the the bracket, right, omega one with omega two, as the following linear combination of necklaces, right? So so here. <clears throat> So you take omega one, you take omega two. So what do you do? So you take two necklaces, right? This omega one and omega two. And what you do, you, you look at uh, an arrow A, right? In omega one. And then what you do, you search for arrow omega, uh, you search for the arrow A star in omega two. And if you see it, if you see it, what you do, you break, you break the necklace exactly in those position and you connect them, okay? So basically you remove A and you remove A star and make one, one, uh, one another, right? So, so basically you have here A, A star. So you remove those uh, uh, arrows and you have one big necklace, right? So no one big necklace, right? So you create one big necklace. So this is in this order. And uh, you do the same with another order. So you look for the uh, A in omega two and then A star in omega one and do the same thing, right? So you, if you see, if you see A and A star, right? The, the, it's opposite. Then you just break the necklace and you, you, you create a bigger necklace, right? So you look at all such <laughs> linear combination of necklaces and it turns out, right? It turns out that, that this, uh, using, this, the, using this, this operation, right? So basically the operation which I'm giving you right now is the same as the operation which can defined at the beginning, right? So this, this operation will give, you, uh, will give you a Lie algebra structure on NQ, right? NQ. And moreover, moreover, there is the central extension of Lie algebras, which I, I, I wrote here, where V is equipped with a trivial community of bracket. Uh, derivation has a natural um, Lie algebra structure. So here, derivation is those derivations which fix actually a uh, semi-simple algebra. And you have this, yeah, there is this uh, short exact sequence of, of Lie algebras or central extension of Lie algebras like this, right? And the reason why Ginsburg and Bockel and Lebrun were interested in this, in this um, construction is because using this, this construction, they actually show that uh, a certain cleaverite, basically the cleaverites associated to these cleavers, uh, were co-joint orbits of the corresponding algebra in Q. Okay, so this is kind of infinite dimensional analog of this co-joint orbit uh, result uh, for, 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 for Nicholas Lee algebras. Okay, so this is quite quite remarkable result actually, uh, and yeah, uh, I can talk about this a lot, but yeah, let's uh, anyway. So this is actually a very nice result. So next, uh, so what is yeah? So what is our goal? So our goal is as as you can see from the title, right? So I'm moving to the second part of my title. So the first part was about necklace Lie algebra. The second part was, if you remember, it's called derived Poisson structure. So maybe I should have said non-commutative derived Poisson structure. So let, let me, yeah, let me now <clears throat> discuss a little bit about this non-commutative Poisson structure. So let, let me remind you first what is Poisson structure, right? So classical one is you have a commutative associative algebra A, and Poisson structure on A is a Lie algebra 
a bracket on E, such that you have this this identity. Yeah. So if you if you just imitate this definition, right? So now if you drop this condition of being commutative algebra, right? Then uh, this definition is quite restrictive, right? And it's uh, it's a result due to partial list of that. If you take algebra with some minor uh, conditions, it turns out that any any uh, such non-commutative bracket will be uh, will be a scalar multiple of the commutator, right? So really nothing nothing interesting going on here. Okay, so <clears throat> so this is yeah so this is one one so which means that this is not uh, so just imitating right just imitating the commutative case is not it's not quite efficient right so we need to do something else and what what was offered i think it was i think one of one of the first uh, sort of uh, suggestions was was, was given by, by ping shu in 94 who actually said that uh, alternatively uh, you can define the notion of non commutative uh, poisson structure as a bi vector field meaning that it's an element of the Hochschild second Hochschild homology which satisfies this this property right uh, and again, this is this is kind of imitating the the, the uh, certain commutative property of the Poisson uh, Poisson bracket, uh, and uh, the, the, you see it, it's it's quite it's quite a nice uh, construction. But what what actually it really gives it it, it gives the Poisson bracket structure on the on the center of the of the algebra, right? So in some sense it is commutative, but at the end it still gives the Poisson structure only on the center of the algebra, which is a, like commutative part of the algebra, right? So, so yeah, so it, it, it is a good definition, but we, 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 are, we are looking for something else, okay? So, yeah, so Kansevich and Rosenberg, I think it was 90, 90, it was a paper 97 or 98, proposed the following uh, principle, right, of, of studying uh, non commutative geometry. So, for example, uh, they were saying, okay, if you want to uh, study some non commutative structures, right, like symplectic structure, Poisson, Calabiao, et cetera, et cetera. What you should do, you should always look at the following thing, right? So, so A in general is is a non-commutative um, algebra, right? Non-commutative algebra. So, what you need to do, you need to uh, so the 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 structure, right? So, for example, a Poisson symplectic structure on A is is a is, is a structure which induces on its uh, representation scheme on the, its representation scheme a classical notion of a symplectic Poisson Calabi what Calabiao etc etc. So, so precisely precisely. Uh, if if you look at the non-commutative algebra A, right, then the rep N, right, rep N A. So this is the rep N A is basically what it's all algebra homomorphisms from A to uh, N, by, M, N by N matrices. Yeah, so so you can look at this one as a scheme, right? Basically, to this scheme you can correspond the commutative algebra, commutative algebra. And what you what you're looking for, you're looking for the structure on A on non-commutative thing. Which will induce on the commutative thing the, the corresponding structure. So, for example, you say something defines the symplectic structure, or something defines Poisson structure on the non-commutative algebra. If this something will induce on the representation variety or representation scheme, the symplectic Poisson, etc., cetera, et cetera, structure. Okay, so I think it's quite quite remarkable principle, which was proposed by Kansevich uh, Rosenberg, but it turns out it has its drawbacks, right? And and um, this is something we'll discuss a little bit later. Okay. So yeah, maybe I should say. So there is a character map. So there is a character map from the non commutative space to space, right? So trace map. So basically, when I say conceptual Rosenberg principle, so you may think this way. So this trace map, right? This trace map. When I say induce, what I mean is that when you, you have some structure on A, right? You induce via this trace map structure on the representation variety, right? On the representation scheme, like this. Yeah, so here trace map is a it's a natural one, right? So it's you know you you take a you send to uh, to a function, right? So this function it's a function the representation meaning that you you act on the row, right? T R A will be a function on the row, and it's defined like this. So you take row A, row A now will be a matrix, right? And you take a trace of this matrix, so you get some number, right? So this is a function. This is a function on representation, right? Okay, so this is quite quite natural. Okay, so yeah, so really what, what I was saying right about this Ping Shu's definition, now I'm, I'm moving to another definition, which is due to uh, to Koli uh, Bovi. Hello? Yeah, any questions, comments? No? Okay. So another definition, uh, and this is the definition I will be actually, uh, will be kind of a main for me. So so of non commutative Poisson structure. So uh, Koli Bovi in mm, 2000, 2002 or 2003 proposed the following um, 
following definition of non-commutative Poisson structure. So suppose A is an associated typology, right? So that's not necessarily commutative algebra. Then HC, HC0 non-commutative Poisson structure on A is a Lie bracket, is a Lie bracket on this space. So re remember that the, we, we remember you obtained, right? We obtained. So Kansirich and Kansirich and Goldman, right, defined the structure on A uh, quotient by the commutator subspace, right? So, so basically, it's in the definition of Crowley boy. It says, okay, so it's a Lie bracket such that when you look at the uh, when you look at the map, right, where you take the first argument a bar, right, a bar is a, is an element in this in this class of the quotient class, right. So you have a map from uh, a commutative quotient subspace to commutative quotient space, right. So the the, way, the map you obtain is 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 a derivation. Then he says it's HC zero Poisson structure. And very soon I will explain you why it's called HC zero Poisson structure. It will, it will clear very soon. So so okay. So the reason uh, why uh, I, I'm saying it's a good definition is because of the following theorem of Crowley Boyer. So it says assume we have a HC zero Poisson structure. Then there, there is a unique Poisson structure, unique Poisson structure, usual Poisson structure on the representation variety such that trees have this property. So, so it exactly follows this Kansirich Rosenberg principle, right? So this definition of uh, Crowley Boyer follows this definition, of, uh, follows this principle of Kansirich Rosenberg. Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, so again, as I said, the examples of HC0 Poisson structures, as we already discussed, if you take A to be a free algebra on two generators, or in general, uh, pass algebra with double queer, where Q is any finite queer, then by a result of Ginsburg, Bockel, and Le Bruin, uh, this possesses a Goldman Kansirich bracket, which induces HC0 Poisson bracket on it. Okay, so on the spot we have the, uh, in the some cases, right, we have HC0 Poisson bracket. But again, as you can see, this is for very special cases, almost like a free algebra cases, right? But we're, we're interested in the cases of algebras, which are not necessarily free algebras, right? So, so for example, we're interested in algebras like, uh, Universal enveloping algebra of uh, semi simple algebras, right? Via algebras and stuff like this. For those cases, this construction does not uh, quite work. So that's why uh, we need to do something, right? So, what do we need to do? Well, uh, first, let me, let me motivate, let me actually explain you why uh, Crowley Bovey uh, called his uh, structure HC0, right? Poisson structure. So, let me remind you. So, some of you may actually know this definition quite well. Yeah, and uh, some may not. So let me uh, let me just remind you. So Hochschild and cyclic homology. So what is say Hochschild and cyclic homology? Right. We'll, we'll start with an algebra, associative algebra, over the field K, and we consider the following complex. Here B is defined. So B, the differential defined like this. This classical thing, which was defined by um, by Hochschild. Yeah. So you just multiply, you know, the the, the elements which stand next to each other. And the last element, last element, the last uh, sum, sum up is you take a n and just permute like this, right? So a n is zero, yeah. And it's not difficult to check. This is indeed a, a differential, meaning that b squared equal to zero. And the n's homology of this, uh, the n's homology group of this uh, of this complex is called n's Hochschild homology of a, and it's denoted like this, right? H H n. So I think you might have seen this even in the previous talks. I don't know. I, I didn't, yeah, okay. Uh, homology. So this is this is a very important object in the in the deformations here, right? Special Hochschild homology. So yeah, so next I want to define a really remarkable uh, class of uh, homology, uh, homologies, right? It's called cyclic homology. It's a, it's, it's a homology theory which was introduced by Alan Cohn. And Alan Cohn was motivated by, by uh, I mean, the reason why Alan Cohn was uh, like interested in this case is because for Alan Cohn, uh, this this um, uh, this um, cyclic homology was an analog of non-commutative Durham complex. So basically, it was for for Alan Cohn, this was an analog of non-commutative Durham Durham homology, right? Durham cohomology. Okay, so more precisely, what what what, what is this? Uh, actually, if you if you look at this definition, I'll, I'll, the way well, I'll give you, it's I mean, it's so simple. It's just quite amazing that nobody. Before Alan Cohn did, did discovered actually this this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, homology theory, but yeah. Anyway, so what do we have? So we have cyclic group uh, Zn, which acts on the um, tensor product of n tensor product A. The action is uh, defined by the generator, quite quite natural, right? You just take a cyclic cyclic permutation, right? 
with, with the sign, right? My, one minus one to the power of minus. So following con, we denote uh, this complex uh, C lambda n minus one a, right? So pay attention, n, tensor n, right? N tensor can respond to n minus one. Yeah. And you take a, a, a co kernel of one minus t. So, so what, what is remarkable is actually is that the B one, the B operation, right? So is, is I mean, it's, it's uh, yeah, it, it respects this, uh, this co kernel, right? More explicitly. So we have a well-defined chain complex. So B is the same B as we had before, right? So B induces uh, the differential on this new complex. Yeah, and this new chain complex is called Kohn's complex, and this was actually a starting point of Kohn's non-commutative geometry, right? So basically, the the whole uh, the whole uh, point of the first uh, paper of uh, Kohn, right, Alan Kohn non-commutative geometry, was introducing this uh, this chain complex, right, and computing various examples of of this uh, of this homology series, right? So the homology group of this chain complex is is denoted by H C A, and it's called cyclic homology. And now I want to note one thing that if you take the zero uh, homology of A, it's exactly commutative quotient space of the of the yeah, of A. Yeah. So so basically, if we if we go back to if we go back to this this example, right? Crowley Boy's definition, right? So basically, his definition it's it's it deals with HC zero, right? Of A. That's why it's called HC zero Poisson structure, right? So for that reason, right? For that reason. Uh, for that reason, it's quite quite natural. Uh, well, I think it's quite natural uh, to consider the higher uh, higher order generalization of uh, of um, boys construction, right? Basically, we, we we want to look at the highest cyclic homologies, right? And we want to introduce a notion of a, a non commutative uh, structure, right? Non commutative Poisson structure with respect to the high order uh, cyclic homologies, not the zero ones, right? But the high ones. Okay. Um, so this is yeah. So this is first remark uh, for, uh, regarding this uh, this thing. Second is that uh, you see in in Kansich Rosenberg principle, right? They will always keep saying it's a representation rep n a, right? And rep n a mod g i t quotient by g l n actually, right? Orbit space of g l n, right? Or g l n orbit space on representation. So in in general, so what 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 bad about this thing is in general this 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 varieties are quite singular. Right? The, those schemes are quite singular, right? So it's it's hard to do anything with them, right? It's it's really hard to do any, anything because they're of the singularities, right? So we, what we want to do, we want to modify this notion of uh, of uh, rep n, right? So that conserved Rosenberg principle will work uh, actually in, in much nicer form. Okay. So yeah, and the, the third remark, the functor which assigns a rep n a, right, to any associative algebra, a commutative algebra, is not an exact functor. This is something which is not hard to see. So what we want to do, because of this, right, it's quite natural, right, to look at the derived functor of this, of this, of this functor. Okay. So yeah, uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Uh, okay. So yeah, I, I need to say a little bit about a little bit about collabial collabial algebras. The reason I, I need to talk about this, those uh, algebras is because. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, is because the, the the examples I will give will be will be about those algebras, right? Suppose uh, A is an associative algebra over the field K of characteristic zero. A is called n Calabial. So this is kind of analog of uh, Calabial varieties. So it's coordinate ring of Calabial varieties. If it's homologically spruce, meaning that um, if you look at A as a as a bimodule over uh, over um, yeah, as a bimodule. Then it has a um, it has a finite projective resolution, and uh, moreover, the second condition is x uh, i of a tensor a is equal to a if i equal to n and zero otherwise as a by modules. Okay, so this is the definition due to Ginzburg, and again, as I said, it's it's a kind of a kind of mimicking right non commutative analog of Calabria variety. So that's why, for example, if we take x in a fine variety. You look at the coordinate ring of this one. It's Calabial algebra. If you know, leave X is a Calabial variety of dimension. Uh. Any questions? No? Okay. So some of the examples, some famous examples, is like if you take well, first of all, any polynomial algebra right, in any number of variables, 
is, is, a, is a Calabi algebra. You can also take the uh, cross product of this algebra, polynomial algebra with uh, gamma, where gamma is um, a finite subgroup of SLM. Uh, another class is universal developing algebra, semi-simple algebra, as I pointed out earlier, and swile algebra, right? So yeah, an is a uh, quotient of the free algebra by this relation, x, y minus y, x, omega x, y. So it's one. You can just say it's one. It's equal to one. That's one. Another one is um, a group algebra of fundamental group of closed spherical manifolds. So you can see it's a lot of algebras, nine nice examples of those. Yeah. So, well, why to study? They are important. So, yeah. So, uh, any, uh, yeah, any Calabio variety has a symplectic Poisson structure. So, question Do Calabio algebras have non commutative symplectic Poisson structures? Right. So, so the, this is the non commutative analog of Calabio varieties. So, it's a natural question Do Calabio algebras themselves possess non commutative or uh, non commutative symplectic Poisson structures? So we will show that under some mild conditions, there exists a higher non-commutative Poisson structure on the Calabi algebras. Yeah. So before this, uh, yeah, I yeah I want this is a bit technical, right? But I want to still uh, say. So remember, I said to you that representation um, representation functor, right? Represent from a category of associative algebras to commutative algebras is not exact functor, right? So for this reason, uh, we need to take a derived version of this one, and. Uh, in order to make this this derived one, uh, what we need to do, we need to um, we need to embed to embed this category of associative algebras to a bigger category, category of the differential graded algebras, and the commutative one we need to uh, extend to the commutative differential graded algebras. And in this case, yeah, uh, Ripen will be naturally extended to a functor from Dej algebras to commutative Dej algebras, and this this new functor, right, this D rep n, which is derived uh, functor. Will be something which is, which will be uh, defined on the, um, uh, the a functor which is defined on the category of the the algebras mod by some relation by by some equivalence relation and C D algebras also mod by some relation. Right? So um, yeah, so maybe um, just a little bit, right? Maybe, maybe mention a little bit. So so yeah, what is this? It's yeah. So for the yeah, yeah, you you don't need to uh, yeah. So it's a bit technical, but those who actually know a little bit about model category, maybe I should mention here that both uh, CDG and DDA are model categories. And when I say this equivalence, right, this equivalence, this is equivalence is uh, homotopy equivalence, right? So so what we do, we, we have this model category, on, um, model category structure on the uh, Dej algebras and CDG algebras. And what we do then, um, we, we, we introduce this homotopy category. So homotopy category is the same category as the category of Dej algebras, but morphisms uh, is is a bit different. So morphisms is defined like this. So what you do, you take uh, you take for each algebra x and each algebra y, it's cofibrant resolution. Look at the home of this uh, cofibrant resolution in the category of Dej algebras, and take a quotient by quasi isomorphism. Right. So this is a morphism between the uh, corresponding objects in the homotopy category. Okay. So this is a bit technical, but uh, yeah, so anyway, so there is a result by Beres, Hachitrian, and Ramados, 2012. Um, the functor, uh, which I mentioned before, right? Not exact functor, has a derived factor. Yeah, has a derived factor, which is defined like this. So we take A, so any A, any associative algebra can be viewed as a differential graded algebra. We take the cofibrant resolution of this the, 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 the algebra and uh, the D rep of this one, right? Of this one will be, uh, yeah, will be, yeah, this is how it's derived. This how it's derived. So this is called derived representation scheme of A and denoted by D rep and A, which is, which is smooth in the, in the, in the, 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 the DGS, right? So, so in some sense, that if you remember, I said that the varieties are not smooth, this representation, but now it, this becomes a smooth variety. Okay, now let, let me go back a little bit uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, to the, yeah, so there is this result by Fagan, Sigan, and, and Quillen. Uh, so this is, I believe, dated 19, 1984, 85, I don't remember exactly, but yes, yeah, so, so sometime around this time, when uh, after the uh, Kohn published his, uh, his uh, paper on this non-cognitive uh, geometry, uh, Fagan, Sigan, and Quillen tried to understand 
um, try to understand the secret homology from a, like a um, Lie algebra homology point of view. And what, what they've done is that they come up with a very nice result. So if you take an algebra and take its cofibrant resolution, then um, you can obtain this, uh, this, this, uh, this, if you remember this, this, this was the exactly the a chain complex which computes the uh, secret homology, it can be obtained by simply taking the commutator quotient space of the cofibrant resolution. Yeah. So now, now again, it's you know it should immediately hit you that you know that you know now on QA we have this structure of the you know of the Kansevich and Goldman, right? So on the commutator quotient space we have this structure of Kansevich uh, uh, and Goldman, which is a Lie algebra structure. So it's natural to expect that uh, we will have a Lie algebra structure on the secret homology. And in this, indeed, indeed, this is this is the case, right? Indeed, this is the case. So maybe I should just speed up. This is the case, right? So if you take um, this is um, yeah, if you take casual Calabria uh, algebra, then there is this derived non-commutative Poisson bracket, uh, which induces the usual Poisson structure on this derived representation variety, and. I, I believe I did. Okay, I, I yeah, I, I forgot probably to, to to put here. So anyway, so basically uh, the the structure uh, this this theorem actually we have in this theorem is 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 a structure which which comes exactly from the Kansevich Kansevich Goldman, right? So basically the the bracket where I'm talking about in this theorem, right, by by me and my co-authors, right, is exactly Kansevich Goldman uh, interpreted in this in this cofibrant resolution case, right? So so we take a we take its cofibrant resolution. And on the commuted equation space of the commuted of the cofibrant resolution, we we're constructing this uh, Kansevich Goldman bracket, and this Kansevich Goldman bracket gives us uh, a Poisson structure or Lie algebra structure on the uh, secret homology, which which is exactly the non-commutative Poisson structure, right? Yeah, and maybe some further result is that uh, you know on the cyclic homology we'll have a Lie algebra structure, on the whole sheet we'll have a Lie algebra Lie module structure. And this famous uh, cone uh, long z sequence will be a, a long z sequence of the Lie modules over the uh, Lie algebra of cyclic homology. Okay, maybe just speed up. Here is an example. Yeah, now, now, uh, yeah, let me get to the main point of this talk, right? So <clears throat> here is a new observations, right? Which was done by one of my students, Rostan Turdebay, recently. So, okay, let's let's start with the, with a the Leibniz algebra. So uh, let me remind you, the Leibniz algebra is a bracket satisfying this, this Jacobi condition, right? this version of Jacobi condition. And uh, the category of Lie algebras is a, is a full subcategory of category of Leibniz, uh, Lie algebra, sorry, Lie algebras is full category of Leibniz algebras. And we consider the linear subspace, which is span of all commit. Yeah, it should be, yeah, it should be, here it should be not a, uh, not, not a square bracket, but this 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 curly break, and this is the node uh, uh, lab L, and this lab L due to the defining identity becomes a two-sided ideal of the Leibniz algebra, and we can take the uh, quotient by this uh, by this um, by this ideal right, two-sided ideal, and the, the the resulting thing is a Lie algebra which is called Leization of L, and this Leization of L has a natural Universal property, right? That any Lie algebra map has to factor through this realization map. Okay. So wh why am I actually saying about this? The reason I'm saying about this, if if we look, look back at Goldman Kansevich original bracket, right? Um, so uh, the Goldman Kansevich Leibniz algebra, right? It's a Leibniz algebra. I, I remind you. And then we're considering the following subspaces, right? So we have on one side we have this Lie R, which is span of this curly, right? A A. On the other hand, we have a uh, commutator subspace RR, which is due to Kansevich and Goldman. Then what Rustam uh, observed is that the lab, right, this lab, two-sided ideal, will be a proper subset of this uh, uh, commutator subspace. And it's, it's quite quite amazing in, in a sense that now we have a epimorphism of the algebras. So from R, uh, lab quotient by lab R to R, so we have a Lie algebra epimorphism from this new, new Lie algebra to the uh, Kansevich Goldman Lie algebra, and uh, quite honestly, yeah, this is yeah, this is something yeah, this is something we were discussing with Rustam, but this yeah, this is definitely a proper subset. So it, it's it's and uh, 
it, now, now, now the question is okay. So, for example, one one question. So there are plenty, plenty of questions, but one natural question is now if you start with the casual Calabria or casual algebra, let's take the uh, cofibrin resolution QA cofibrin resolution of this uh, algebra. Then, what is the Lie algebra structure on the QA quotient by Leib QA? So, if we take the if we take the corresponding uh, corresponding keys of this one, right? RR. Or QA, QA. This, according to the Fagan, Sigan, and Quillen, right, is, is a cyclic homology, right? It's a chain complex of cyclic homology. <laughs> but for this one, we still don't know. I mean, we, we, are, we are doing some computation, but still we don't know exactly what the structure is. We don't know what the uh, complex structure here, what is the what's chain complex. So, so, so we believe we believe it's something which will involve both cyclic homology chain complex and Hochschild. But it's still not it's still not known. So we are still working on this. This is working project, and uh, and of course there are some other things which uh, um, which is related to this one. It's uh, some computation of uh, early results of um, uh, Gilfand, uh, Fagan, and Fuchs about the cohomology of certain Lie algebra. So 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 yeah maybe yeah maybe should I should also point out here that yeah regarding this Gilfand, Fagan, Fuchs result is that you see the. What Kansevich did actually uh, in, in, in this paper, in the seminar talk, in Gilfan's talk, right? He was trying to, to understand, right, the, the, the Lie algebra homology of this, uh, this uh, R quotient by commutator R, right? And it's, it's actually quite hard. I mean, computing of this is hard, and it's actually something even um, similar to what uh, Gilfan and uh, Figen Fuchs did for certain Lie algebras. And now, but now we have a new chain complex, right? And there is a there is a hope, right? There is a hope that maybe um, maybe the homology of this one, right, of new um, newly algebra, um, might be easier to compute. So, yeah. in in any case, there is something something to think about this, right? So, so because there is this there is this epimorphism of free algebras, right? You can do a lot of uh, things, like for example, you can consider certain spectral sequences, right, which which will relate homology so one with another. And uh, yeah, and so this is one point, right? And the second point is that now it's now there is the possibility of uh, looking at this non commutative structure from completely different point of view, right? So before we were looking from, um, so we're defining uh, we're defining the notion of a non commutative possible structure as something which uh, some structure on A which induces on commutative quotient space, right? A Lie algebra structure, but now it's it's a different point of view, right? So now we can introduce a new type of non commutative structure. So it's a, it, it's a, it's a it's a structure which is a Leibniz algebra structure on on original algebra, so that on the on the on, on the quotient of this one, right? It induces the algebra structure, and quite honestly, I think it's 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 a completely different non commutative uh, uh, Poisson structure, um, as as I said, right? Because of this uh, of this proposition, right? And this is something which we are working. We, we haven't we haven't obtained yet uh, big results, but we're hoping to, to get something new very soon. Anyway, we, we, yeah, probably I, I should stop here. Thank you. Okay, thank you very very much for your nice talk. So, are there any questions or comments? I have a question, uh -huh. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, the last slide, yes. Uh, this yes. Uh, yes. What uh, about this uh, quotient R over the commutator? In a uh, finite dimensional case, it must be very small algebra. Um, because it, on the mm -hmm. uh, left uh, side, this is a uh, liaison. So this, uh -huh. this is the uh, yeah. Lie algebra, the uh -huh. biggest Lie algebra yeah, yeah. Uh, we yeah, yeah. can yeah. obtain yeah. Yeah, from yeah. Leibniz. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. what Lie algebra? Is this uh, R over commutator? Yeah, but uh, Shakadalaj, you see that's the point. You see, I think for the for the uh, finite dimensional algebras, right? This is, as you said, this is quite small object. That, that's why that's why uh, the, the the example we are considering here is a huge yeah. free algebra on two generators, right? So so I, I believe this this will be trivial, as you said, this will be trivial in the finite dimensional mm -hmm. cases, at least in most of the cases. Yeah. But but but. But in, in the case when it's a uh, pre algebra, then this is, yeah, this is uh, this is actually quite big thing. Right. This so, big thing. so this is interesting for uh, infinite dimensional algebra. Yes. yes, 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 yes. Thank you see, so, so, so uh, again, as I said, the right side, right side, uh, yes. this, this, 
quotient by uh, commutative quotient. It has so many, uh, uh, so many, um, you know, so many connections with so many different things. This is so you can actually see in this this paper of Konsevich. So he he related this this Liao de cohomology with many many things. And now I think from from our point, you see, and but somehow somehow they, they kind of miss this part, right? This this left part. I mean, they never they never understand. And to be quite honest, I I also miss this one. And only when only you know my 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 understanding was that these are two the same things, right? And then when Rustam actually made the computation and showed these are two different things. I was quite actually quite surprised. And uh, yeah, so so I think now now it's time to sort of look more carefully at, the, at this uh, at this the algebra. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, so I have a question. So, so okay. here we consider non-commutative Poisson structure, and and also when you when you propose the question, we can also mm -hmm. ask whether there are there are non-commutative symplastic structure. So, in yes, which yes. case we 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 can, yeah, we can have yeah. Uh, so 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 yeah. Good 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 point, right? So. Um, so basically, yeah. So basically, when you have this uh, this Calabio, uh, usual Calabio casual algebra case, right? You actually have a symplectic structure. So so it, it's it's exactly non -commit. So here I said Poisson. In general, it's Poisson. But for, for for the case when you have n casual algebra, it's Poisson. But when you have usual casual case, it's actually a usual uh, non commutative symplectic structure. And uh, maybe I should also remark here that. Non-commutative symplectic structure was also considered separately uh, by uh, Ginsburg, Ettingov, and Crowley-Bovey, right? So there is a paper by these three authors. Uh, they they actually carefully studied this uh, non-commutative symplectic structure. Mm. So 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 yeah. So in the case when uh, in the case when algebra is Calabio and Casual, uh, usual Casual algebra, then the cofiber resolution will have a symplectic structure, non-commutative symplectic structure. Okay, okay, I see. So in this special case, we have symplectic structure. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So uh, if no other questions, let's thank the thank Professor Fahod Shamtov again. Thank you very much for your next talk. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I think we can continue. So